Hey, so we're about to play Celtic again for the second time in a row, and there's an insane schedule about to happen. I'll show you that in a second. But this is the situation. We play 32, we've got 82 points. They play 33, and they've got 73 points. Nine points gap, five games going, five games to go, including this match for them. And that's important, because if we win this match against them now, we will go 12 points clear, and they'll only have four games remaining. Now, goal difference does come first, so head-to-head -head isn't going to factor in here unless, of course, they end up on the same goal difference and goal scored, which is actually possible, <laughs> considering the fact they're 16 goals behind and 15 goals behind in the actual score column. So fix that, and they're probably quite close, really. However, I would argue four games and 16 goal difference is quite a lot, especially if we beat them now, that's going to widen that on both sides. Should just mention notable recent results. 4-0 against Rangers with 10 men. 2-0 against Motherwell. We're in the final. 2-0 at Rangers. And of course the 2-2 that's just occurred. Everything happened in the first 23 minutes. Actually, the equaliser that made it 2-2 happened in 22 minutes, 22 seconds. I love it when they, I love it when it comes together, really, in that sense. But yeah, Celtic now. With I mean Smash Amir, we should be Smash Amir, we just need a point from the remaining five games, basically. This is the situation as well. We are without both first choice fullbacks and second choice right back. So Ross McCrory's playing there. Pen Rice on the left. Cesar Quenza Milo in the middle, who has taken over as joint best defender. Ignore the down arrows. Formiga and Bile in the middle because, yeah, uh, Nacelle's 6.58. 7.12 for the season. 6.58. Bowler, Mockery, Elliot, Duda. Just, give, just, giving, just giving him time to think about what he's done. Same with Fernandez, actually, as well. Same with Fernandez. They're both in the same boat this year. Not really done a lot on the old... Like I say, 7.12 overall for the season, but he's got three goals, three assists. His good performances haven't actually resulted in... It says title will be ours. That's a lie. They could technically catch us because head-to-head -head is third behind goal difference and goal scored. I have checked. I am contemplating going attacking. They've got a free kick. This worries me. It is worth noting, actually, at the very, towards the end, the closing stages of that two-all draw with them, Sizar pulled out an insane double save. Insane. Haven't really mentioned Sizar too much, but I did say that he had taken over from Ted Smith, because that was happening. Ted Smith's contract is actually up at the end of the year, not that it really matters in terms of the save right now, but yeah. Oh, Bowler's got through there, and Bowler has hit the post. And the ball has bounced back directly into his path, but he's decided not to take a swing at it for whatever reason, and the highlight has not ended. It's back in Werner's hand for a second time during the same highlight, and it still hasn't ended. What a bizarre throw. But that is incredibly annoying. Twice the highlight, twice the highlight passed through their goalkeeper. And then this is the end result. I've just picked up Sizar on this, that, oh God. I just picked up Sizar and that happens. Because of course it does. Of course it does. He scored again, Pedro, for God's sake. He's actually more prolific than Duda is. 27 goals. We're actually favourites for this. We're not favourites in the league, but we are favourites for this. Defending. What is it? Yeah, you may as well throw your hands in the air, but it's your fault. Ross McCrory's just taking an injury. He's not being sub because we have literally nobody left to play there. Oh, Sympathise. Aggressive. Your pride is at stake. You are letting yourselves down. Also have no one to really fill in a left back either. I can pull Owen Miller across because he can, can play there. Mockery. One back. Owen Miller can play left back, so I can bring Cardoso on and move Miller over. Because I do notice the Penrice is on a 6.1. But Quenza heads this one on. There's some chicanery there, and it ends up a mockery. Bang, in the goal. Mockery, I got a piece of news through actually. Mockery is in the running for Europa League Player of the Season. Despite being knocked out of the second knockout stage, he is in that list, along with two Tottenham players. One of the players at Atletico Madrid that we just got knocked out by. And uh can't remember who the last one was now. Oh, it was Werner, who was still at Leipzig in this, and who knocked out Rangers. Pile on the edge of the box. McCrory. Don't know why I'm chosen this highlight to talk over when I haven't talked over half of them so far. Formiga. I don't know. Weirdly sensibly, maybe. Perrin Rice. Tackled. We'll get the ball back. We'll keep it in. We'll punt it in. It's a corner. Thank you. James Perrin Rice isn't having the best game of his career. He did well there, in fairness. And he is up to a 6.4. He is booked, though, so I might make that change. So my back line now is three central defenders primarily and a defensive midfielder who is injured. Not the best it's been. I dare say we're getting a smidge FM here. McCrory. Bile. Oh my wonder. That's not a phrase. My brain went 
oh my word, and wonder goal at the same time. That's what happened there. So I ended up saying, oh my wonder. But, oh my lord. That is goal of the season. Staying attacking because I want the win. Oh damn. Regret immediately. I haven't, I haven't made any more subs. Bile is knackered. He can take a rest that he's wanted for about four weeks after these, after these games because the rest of them aren't Celtic and Rangers. In fact, it's two home games in a row next, so he can definitely sit those ones out if he wants to. Now we need four points from these last five games to win us the title, but two home, ga two home games in a row next. Of course, everything's irrelevant, and everything's irrelevant if Celtic slip up again in their remaining four games. That would do it as well. And because they don't necessarily play the same times as we do, we might end up winning the title when we're not even playing. Which is why I haven't really brought any focus on any particular game in the run-in that might win us the title. In. But two all again. <sighs> Goalkeepers made 15 saves. But yeah, th this, is, this is the run that we've got. I'll show you the calendar. Uh, Hearts, Hibernian, Motherwell. Three games in five days. And then Hamilton, Hibernian and Hearts again in the remaining two weeks. But it is four games in... Eight days, basically. It's not great, but I, I will rest Bile for these two home games, I think, because he's getting jaded and we need him. We need him, basically. But all we need is a net four points in the remaining fixtures between us and Celtic. Rangers are out of it, by the way. Rangers are well out of it. I think they just lost again there. Did I see? Oh no, they won 4-1. So I'll let you know when we've won the title and then I'll bring you the end of season roundup, basically. I'm not going to do the Scottish Cup final. I think we won it last year, didn't we? So 2-1 here. That's good. 12 points the gap now for certain. Four games to go for the pair of us. One point in any of the remaining four matches seals us the title. Also, the fact there's no title winning nonsense here proves the fact that they were lying in the pre-game team meeting. That's it, we could win the title at, at Celtic. Also, my assistant manager is getting a lot of work recently. More in an effort just to speed things along. Really? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Goal of the month. Yes, Keenan Jones, great goal. But how the hell is Biles' goal not in this top three. Unbelievably robbed. Ah, don't, don't even have to play a game because Celtic have lost against Motherwell. Nearly had a comeback though, nearly had a comeback. But the fact they've lost, I think, means, I think that means we're, yep, we are. Previous winners, Celtic, 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 Sterling, who exceed expectations throughout and claim to deserve title. Yeah, I'll be honest, previous, previous messages on this have said it, it was, said it was a massive achievement and all that jazz, but bear in mind we're not far off. Also, this has changed again. Make your minds up. Four years ahead of schedule. We'll take it. Beautiful. Beautiful. So yeah, now I just bow forward to the end of this season. I told you we could win it without even playing a game. I mean, whilst we're not playing a game. So yeah, now I'll just charge the rest of this season and show you the end, basically. And if we did need to play the game, decisive. Also worth mentioning, I brought this lad on. I did, I did say he was coming in in January. He is nowhere near the expected standard right now. Because this was a... This was, this was a job done at the same time we got Alstrom. He was in the same original international new gen batch, but he was too young at the time to join straight away, like Alstrom, unlike Alstrom, who has not quite lived up to his billing either yet. But his potential ability is quite good, in fairness, if he can reach it. Not that it matters because we don't have the time to deal with this now. But yeah, great determination. This is the kind of player you want to be looking out for, the ones that maybe might have something to them. You never know, even if they're not up to scratch right away. I wonder if that's going to be a thing in FM21, these international new gens that just pop in without a club. Wolfsburg are just being torn them away from home. Uh, Atletico's being severe as well in the meantime. Our, our besters are continually beating the sides they're facing as well. So if we do lose to the eventual Europa League winners, I will not be mad. But yeah, I'm, I'm just glad we got to the, like, the same stages as same stages Rangers and Everton because it kind of gives an indication of where we might be at. Oh, Players Manager of the Year's popped in already. Thank you. Wow, didn't see that one coming. Both semi-finals end in the nil-nil. So first leg is the only one that mattered. Wolfsburg versus Atletico Madrid in the final. Wolfsburg are a team I quite like. I think I've got the right place, but I've been to the car museum near Wolfsburg. So I do have a weird fondness for them just off the back of that. Also Hanover, which is where we were staying. But might see a, might see a save with one of them in the future. Not my beta save, I will say that. But you may see a save with one of those two in the future. Somewhere along the line, maybe. Sorry, Sheffield United had just identified Bile as a target. 33 million is the rumour, but something caught me off guard there was the manager. Yes, it is Patrick Vieira. Right? Okay, first and foremost, what happened to Chris Wilder? I think it was, you know what happened to Chris Wilder. 
I feel like I commented. I feel like I commented on Chris Wilder's sacking when it happened. Patrick Vieira, Nick Pope in goal, Will Hughes into that midfield. Bunch of people I don't recognise. Burke in the defence. I do recognise him though. And, oh, uh, Angel Gomez. Oh, they are in the championship. I didn't even recognise that. They are in the. Cha- oh yeah, that's what. That's part of the reason why they got the sack, wasn't it? Um, they are in the championship. Patrick Vieira in charge of Sheffield United in the championship. Huh. Strange times in the Steel City. Possibly not as strange as the ones that are yet to come. Yeah, might as well announce it now, eh? Sheffield United, I'm be safe. It was a matter of time. It was a matter of time. Sheffield is a city close to my heart. So it was only a matter of time before I circled my way around the Yorkshire clubs and got to Sheffield United. I have fond memories of Sheffield and mostly because I had exams in Hillsborough. I prefer Sheffield United. Sorry, it is what it is. I'm not one of those. I'm not one of those people who has a hatred of one side or the other. But yeah, I have not fond memories of Hillsborough. So by process of elimination, Sheffield United are my favourites. Also, their nickname's the Blades, for God's sake. Come on now. Yeah, my beta save will be Sheffield United. It'll start as soon as the beta happens, pretty much thereabouts. Not sure what days it's going to be released on. I'm still going to try and aim maybe for Tuesday, th- uh, Tuesday, Thursday. But we'll see what happens. Maybe a weekend upload, depending on when the beta drops, of course. Uh, just a quick reminder, there'll be no beta Twitch save. Twitch stuff will happen with Football Manager 21 once the main game releases. Also, the Sheffield United save should stretch into, you know, December and beyond past the release date. That's the intention. Because I'm not fully 100% certain what I'm going to do on YouTube, if I am going to do anything on YouTube, once the main game releases. Time and, obviously I've mentioned the personal situations, time and the personal situation. I may not have as much time as I would like to do YouTube stuff, so maybe once the Sheffield stuff's gone, up, gone, I don't know if I'm going to do anything more than just seasonal updates off the Twitch, Twitch side of things. We'll just see what my personal situation's like once that rolls around, I guess. I do have an idea what I would like to do for 21, YouTube-wise, but we'll see. It's a very uh, fluctuating situation, basically, right now. Sadly, so wrap up their season, actually. 38 games played, 83 points. 10 or 13 behind us, depending on how the last game goes. We did win the cup, by the way. 2-0. Obviously, Hibs no longer in charge by Vincent Company, but Crank has done a decent job. Worth actually saying, in terms of this league table, I'll do it now, actually. St Mirren. I mean, the bottom three, way adrift of everyone else, it's got to be said, but St Mirren, nowhere near as good as they were last year without Karanka. Derek Adams, not done particularly well. See, seventh in the media prediction, they did get their way up that a little bit. But yeah, 11th as things stand. And the United, actually, as well, they were in the top half last time, weren't they, with us? So, a bit of a surprise, these two in particular, not in that top half. Aberdeen just missed out again, which is hilarious. Miller out for this last game. I think he was suspended for this last one anyway, so it didn't make a difference. The last match of this season seems a lot later than normal. I don't think I've got as, quite as much to click through at the end of this year before I get the final stuff. But it just feels a lot later. It feels like there's normally towards the beginning of May, the end of the season here. So I should only have about a week or so to click through before I get the end of season stuff and what I want. No, I'm not selling anyone. Not that it matters, of course. So we actually end the season with a loss, but a dude, a goal. Does that make him top? I don't, actually, it didn't matter. He had 21 and Pedro obviously had already finished his season, but 22 puts himself clear. Might have put him top of the average ratings, though. 5 million for winning. It's not a massive amount, considering it's a title win, but it is Scotland, I suppose. Huh. Right. So in the dying days of this campaign, I get linked with Chelsea. I mean, it's news to me. The only way that could have been better is if it had been Sheffield United knocking on the door at the very end. I don't think I actually ever mentioned it, but Atletico are being managed by Pep now. So we did get knocked out by Pep Guardiola, which is something we can take solace in, really. I mean, it was Atletico Madrid as well on top of that, but obviously there's a new record high, new high average rating for Duda as well. Or for the league. I presume that was going to be for hours, but for the league, wow. It was Jonas Wind, the Celtic striker last year, that he's beaten the record of, and Bolo has also beaten the assist record. Not, not content with scoring a buttload of goals. Dude is player, player of the year. Congratulations. These are starting to come through now. Football writers, player of the year. In fact, three Sterling players, top of that. They were the top of the actual stats, I think, as well. Top goal scorer, we knew that one. Young player of the year as well. All that jazz. Team of the year. Don't have the goalkeeper, don't have the right back, understandable. Don't have the left winger, understandable. And sharing the striker role. That feels a little bit harsh on Chris Mockery, actually, looking at that now. But <laughs> Nissel makes team of the year. 
only ended up with a seven only ended up with a seven point zero nine, although seven point one four all told. Uh, by the end of the season, four goals, five assists. Not great returns, although actually better than last year. Thinking about it, actually played more than last year somehow. Dudo acknowledges the Sterling effect three times. I'm actually going to click through all the way to the thirtieth. I want to know who wins the uh, Europa League now because if Atletico win it, then I can absolutely feel no grievances of being knocked out by them. We've actually not got the personal stuff yet either. Just league awards. Falkirk are back. Not that matters. Probably happens tomorrow because there's a recovery day here. So once there's no training at all, I think it comes through. I can only assume this is some weird thing. There it is. Some weird thing to do with the custom database. So who's been added? Chris Mockery has been added and the formation is reflected as well. Chris Mockery slots in there. I don't know if Keenan Jones was in there originally. No, he wasn't by the looks of things. It seems a little bit harsh on Keenan Jones to not actually be in it at all. Uh, Quenser, Bile and Sizar. Oh, Keenan Jones is in it actually. He's in the... Midfield, that's, the, that's what threw me off. But Ted remains number one goalkeeper, of course, for the overall 11. Gordon at right back, he was there already from last year alone. Cardoso and Graham, now at AS Beziers, on loan from Dijon. Didn't even get anything at Dijon. Just got immediately fobbed straight on to Beziers. Now has he actually done out there? Not great. So, players of the year, Duda, Bowler, Bile, understandable. Goal of the season, Bile against Kilmarnock, not the one, of course, you just saw earlier on. Starting this season, Bile, young player of the season, Duda again, because obviously, I mean, that's not bad, Befa Cup, whatever, but winner, winner, knocked out by Atletico Madrid. Couldn't really ask much more from this three. Mm. Befred eluded us. I'm intrigued to make the most of set pieces. I think we actually do make the group stage minimum. I think, I think Scotland's moved up the rankings. I think they do actually make the group stage minimum now. I say only end of next season is actually only be top two. Not that we're doing another season, of course, but once again, in case you didn't know, basically end of season team meeting, just say whatever the whatever whatever the expectations meeting says for next year. Say that in the team meeting as well. Never fails, or rarely fails. I kind of want to click through to the 30th, but I don't want it to change the I don't think it changes the game over till June, does it? But we'll just run through all the stats and then we'll check on see whether or not Atletico win the Europa League. After Celtic winning last year, of course. Actually, what happened to Celtic in General, because they would have got automatic group stages for winning the Europa League. They'd have been the top seed in their group as well, for good measure. And I didn't see them at all in the in the Europa League, so they certainly weren't third. Oh, the new record as well. 24 assists was the that one. I'm actually curious. How did they do? Oh, they did get to the first knockout round. They did get through their group and got revenged by Man United, who were the team they beat in the Europa League final. Oddly enough. So their group was Bilbao, Ajax and Dortmund. Could have been worse. Did the business in the home games, it seems. Mostly. I bet it was tight, actually. It looked like three wins, three losses. Did the double on Ajax. So Ajax would have been bottom. Probably. They were. Dortmund knocked out on head-to-head -head with Celtic by the looks of things. Lost 2-1 and then beat them 2-0. Wow, one goal made all the difference there. I don't even remember seeing Dortmund in the Europa League. I won manager of the year as well, for good measure. Chris Mockery will take part of the European Championship Finals. So part of the Scotland squad. I did did say he would reach the did say he would reach the international scene and he did did do it in this season. And that was part of the reason why I got him as well, because I wanted, as I said at the beginning of the year, to build the team around two main players. One, just generally awesome, and one brilliant Scottish player that we could also focus the team around too. And that does lead us quite nicely actually into the end of season stats. We'll do them now. Average rating wires will ignore Mikhail Alstom, who played three games and got an average rating of 9.3. One goal, one assist in that game, but never mind. Owen Miller. I can start to see why he snuck through and developed into the joint best defender now. 7.46. Pretty damn good, really. Four goals as well in that time, mostly from corners, I imagine. Bowler though, 7.46 as well. Bile and Duda snapping out their respective heels. Got a look at those stats for Josh Bowler though, by the way. 47 starts, six sub appearances, but 47 starts, 46 goal related things i've got the term for it now but 22 goals and 24 assists 46 46 combined in 47 starts bonkers return there really bonkers return 26 goals for duda not quite as prolific i don't think i think he had more last year with six assists for him as well Ball had 11 assists and 15 goals from midfield mockery had 14 goals from the attacking midfielder role and only eight assists but good really for Miga, five and five and 19 isn't Bad. Came in in January, but 5-5 five and five in that time. Pretty damn good, all things considered. The two defenders, 
Surely behind them as well, both on 7.36, the two main defenders, seven goals apiece as well, basically identical records. Although one had way more mistakes, noticeably. Although it is interesting to notice the one who had more headers per minute also had more mistakes. Does lead you to, does lead you to understand maybe what counts as a mistake if those headers don't go to a teammate. <coughs> Gordon did well, Glassell did well in his appearances. Yes, he had a few starts in various competitions. Leyes did pretty decently, I can say in the cell. Still 7.14 in a division that he is supposedly way outclassed by. Number seven on my list right now. But yeah, meant to be a Labbrook's Championship player. Hates the big games, is inconsistent. 7.14. Seven goals, six assists. It's actually doesn't look at... Wait, had a pretty decent run towards the end as well. Seven goals, six assists. Got those numbers up a little bit towards the very, very end. Fernandez, 7.08, despite the fact he was basically dropped towards the end of the year. 18 assists. I didn't even notice that, to be honest. 18 assists. Only the two goals. Far cry from what he had previously, though. And then there are actually a fair few underneath the two goalkeepers, although it's players who haven't actually played and lo people who have been loaned out, in fact. So can't be too mad there. And I will mention the only player that I remember from this year's youth intake, because it was disappointing, of course, as well. Mike Noseworthy. Signed because of his name. It ain't gonna be any it isn't gonna be anything special. His name is Michael Noseworthy. Also part Canadian, which might please some people. But you look at that list of players there, and I now got to essentially speak a little bit about the save as a whole. I have enjoyed it. I was obviously a little bit annoyed at myself more than anything about the last couple of weeks just because of, well, unavoidable things. But yeah, obviously it went a little bit off the rails towards the end there. I wish I could have done a little bit more. I wish I could have done another season. But in terms of the team as a whole, it's not, not been the most amount of time for players to sort of make an impact on me personally for the sentimental reasons. Obviously, the players I had for a second time have done very well, for the most part. Ted Smith, Nacelle, both have cemented their places in that kind of sentimental charts. Like I said, there will be a top 10 video at some point. They might be on it. A few other players possibly done enough to maybe sneak into the bottom of a top 10 list. I don't know. We'll see. Duda, Duda in two years has done phenomenally well. Those defenders as well, actually. Quenza Cardoso, a little bit unsung heroes, really. Quince has spent 19 months here, 18 months here, done very well. Cotto, so I think spent the full two years, done very well in both of those years. Leyes, I don't know. I don't know if Leyes has done quite enough. He has been here all th like three years in a row. Done very well, but I just don't know if he's done enough in those three years. Obviously, he keeps over fuss that he couldn't go to PSG, fair enough, but they did get over it. I'm just not sure really anyone else is necessarily... There's a lot of people I'm fond of. Leyes, Jones, Kenyon Jones, very fond of him. I don't know if any of them would sneak into a top 10, let's say. Bile being here a year, if we'd had more than one year, maybe we would have made it. Maybe we would have done it. Miller as well, of course, if he'd, if he'd had another year as well and he continued the way he was going, may have made it. Sizar, of course, if we'd had, probably would have needed more than one more season for Sizar to make that kind of impact. But, oh, Bowler, of course. Bowler has redeemed himself. Three years on our roster, 7.62, 7.2, 7.5. I think possibly my previous feelings on Josh Bowler from FM19 have affected his rating here. I don't think we had him this year, but I think I had him on FM19 and it was a massive disappointment then. Not here. He might be the one. He might be the one from this save and only from this save this year that sneaks in. Of course, the other, the other main players here in this save have been a my York save too. So I think if anyone does sneak in, Chris Mockery, of course, as well, another one that if we'd had another year or two, probably would have made it if he kept it up. We'll see, though. You'll see when I finally make my final decision on a top 10, when that video does come out, who makes it in there. But just one last thing to do. The commercial stuff has gone way up this year, quite nicely as well. Quite like that. Although a lot of it was competition money. And all those upgrades were finally happening. Not really matter now, of course, but the upgrades were happening to both training and youth facilities. The say was never going to go long enough for them to be relevant to such particular youth facilities. The save wasn't never going to be long enough for that to filter through with youth intakes in a few years' time. But yeah, just wanted to do it for realism's sakes. We're top of the sponsorship table. In the league which generates in excess of 23 million in sponsorship, Sterling Albion have tried the highest sponsorship deals this season, raking in 12.5. We have half of the sponsorship. Some of them have 90k. We have half of the sponsorship and we have Celtic and Rangers. What? All right then. I mean, Duncan Ballantyne, I suppose. <laughs> right, so it just loads the new season in here, which is a bit awkward. So I'm glad I did the stats when I did them. Ah, well, Wolfsburg won 2-0. Wolfsburg, though, European League champions. 
Love to see it. Where did they finish in the National League? 13th. Fair enough. Brecolo. I'm a little bit disappointed from Brecolo. He looks quite good here, actually, but I thought I thought he might move on in real life. I thought he might go to a bigger club, but he hasn't done it. And maybe it's, you know, COVID, COVID year and money and all that jazz, but I thought he'd move on. I thought he has a good future. Arnold, of course, got an inform recently, <laughs> FIFA-wise. He was who I packed for my first foot rewards. I was happy and so at the same time because like, mm, wish it could have been better, but it is a Wolfsburg player, so fair enough. Uh, Culture, though, is an interesting name to see there. Not there in real life, but signed him Southampton save, I think it was. One million from Eurocup revenue, some more money there as well. Financially, not that it matters, I will show you it, but 37 million. We st ended, started with 60. Yeah, started with 60. You can just see it on the screen, Charlie. Ended with 37. So we did actually end the season in profit. No, we actually ended up with 2 million down, but we did spend obviously quite massively. We did spend quite a lot. 51 million spent. 51 million spent. 325k brought in. And we've still only made a net loss of 2 million. Good work. Good work, guys. Everyone, well done. Anyway, that's it from Sterling Albion. A bit of a weird way to end it all, but there we go. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you again in. Well, probably the, the beta will probably actually drop before the top 10 video comes out, I do imagine. So look for that somewhere within the beta time frame. But I'll see you again quite shortly, actually, I imagine now. Until then, ta -ra.